Okay, hello everybody. Hello, we are happy to welcome you to our event today. And uh, as you can see, the weather is much better than it was last year, last week. Sorry. And um, we truly hope that uh, this webinar are very useful for you. Uh, for that users uh, who already have our equipment and for those who are just considering to buy it. Uh, so uh, kindly type pluses in chat if you can hear me and if you see me. Uh, let's wait a little uh, because I see that people are still joining. And for now, let me introduce myself. Unfortunately, I forgot to do it last time. I'm very sorry for this. Uh, my name is Dina and uh, I am responsible for international sales and techno IC team. And uh, I'm the person who received your requests, inquiries uh, to our email info at technoec.com. And uh, I'm happy to give you consultation regarding logistics, prices, dealership, delivery time, emissions, and uh, other information. And uh, yes, I see your pluses. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, our session today is fully dedicated to the equipment that helps you to locate plastic pipes. And my colleague Dmitry will show it on our site. Okay. I wish you to enjoy this event. One second. I will take my headphones back. Okay, uh, hello everybody. Uh, thank you, Dina. Uh, my name is Dima, <clears throat> same as Dina, but with M. You can call me Dmitry. Uh, and today we will be talking about uh, PVC uh, pipe locators, which we produce here at Techno EC. So first, I would like to check uh, if you can see me or hear me well again. So please uh, type pluses into the chat because we switched uh, the sound. And if, if the sound and the video quality is fine, we will carry on. While you're doing this, uh, I'll be telling that uh, today we will be having a little bit smaller uh, a little bit smaller format of uh, theoretical part, and we will be having a bigger uh, dedication to the practical part of our event. And uh, generally, we, we, will, we will be locating today uh, a pipe, an asbestos pipe, which conducts no current with these devices for real. And uh, that is why this uh, event is unique, unique for everybody who joined it and also for us. Today we are actually testing our new test polygon test field uh, behind our building. I will show you everything uh, in in a couple of minutes. And uh, I hope that uh, everyone sees and hears me well. So basically, we have uh, at Techno EC two sets of equipment uh, which support the location of plastic pipes. I will split them so you could see that they are different. So there are two ways to locate the plastic pipe or asbestos pipe or any non-conducting pipe. The first one is acoustic, where you use the impact device, the headphones and the acoustic sensor as ground microphone to hear the sound that is emitted through the pipe uh, created by this device. I will tell you in details in a couple of minutes. And another one is electromagnetic. This is the way when you put a special pipe zone the, inside the pipe and it creates the electromagnetic signal which uh, is detected by the receiver, this, this device. You may already be familiar with this device. Uh, we take it almost to every our event. This is AP 19.3 receiver. Today, um, 
it will be demonstrated for PVC pipe location. Okay, so uh, let us start with uh, the acoustic uh, acoustic method. I will describe what, what's included in the basic set, and then I will describe what comes in the electromagnetic set, and then we will take both and we'll go to our test field and see what we can find with these devices in real working conditions. Okay, acoustic uh, plastic pipe location. What do we need to do that? First thing we need is something that creates the noise in the pipe. As the pipe uh, made of asbestos or plastic is not capable of providing any electric current, we need to create some signal in it somehow. For this particular purpose, we use this device, which is called UM112. It's a Russian version, but uh, we also have a localized version of this device, which basically is a hammer which strikes the pipe surface without damaging it. So when you connect this device to a pipe, I will show you. Let me demonstrate a little bit. Just hold on a second. Okay. Everything is fine, I guess. I hope. Oh. Yeah. So as you can see and hear, this thing creates the impact. I will turn it off just so you won't be afraid as much as I did. <laughs> yeah. So basically this device creates the impacts which are emitted throughout the pipe and this what creates the signal which you are going to detect. Also, you need some kind of device which uh, supports the detection of this signal. That is why we're using the acoustic sensor, the headphones and uh, the receiver. Uh, I would like to give you more a little bit more information about the receiver because technically it's it's uh, the heart of this set and uh, this is ap027 uh, multifunctional digital location receiver very long name but you can call it ap27 and we will know what you're talking about so this device uh, has multiple functions and all these functions are depending on the sensor which is connected to this receiver. So basically, we have an electromagnetic sensor. If we connect it to the receiver, we will be having a metal pipe and metal cable detector and locator. If we connect an acoustic sensor, we can make out of this uh, water leak detector, plastic pipe locator, cable fault locator, almost anything you need to locate your underground utilities. See, that's pretty multifunctional device. But today, we will be showing how to locate plastic, technically the asbestos pipe, in the manhole. And of course, you need something to power everything. And the receiver, AP27 receiver, uh, works on four AA alkaline batteries or accumulators, accumulators also available. And this device, is powered by the internal accumulators of the transmitter, AG144.1 transmitter. Also, this is a Russian version of transmitter, but we have a localized with all the English indications and all the necessary information to start from scratch, to start the location from scratch. Also, this whole set I I'm showing to you is called TPT522N. This whole set was developed to locate almost all kinds of underground utilities. Metal cables, plastic pipes, metal pipes, optic fiber cables. Also, um, with some extension accessories, it can do cable fault location. With a high voltage pulse transmitter, it can locate uh, cable faults acoustically. So this is pretty much all-in-one solution to give you the, the best uh, performance for this kind of equipment. 
Uh, there is one, uh, one uh, I think, important disadvantage in uh, all this thing. You can't measure depth of the located utility. You can't measure depth on plastic pipe. You can't measure depth on uh, metal pipe or power cable or electric cable or anything. Unfortunately, this device shows only signal level. And this is a minor disadvantage, but still, this thing is pretty multifunctional. It has a lot of applications and it's a rugged equipment. It will help you almost in any conditions. Also, I must state that this equipment uh, is IP54, IP65 protected. That means that if you close the lid of uh, that transmitter, um, it will not be allowing to water <clears throat> pour inside the transmitter electronics and it will be protected. The sensor, which is also used for water leak detection, is IP65 protected. It, uh, it's not affected by water. Uh, and the receiver is IP54 protected. So, yeah, it's quite rugged. And you can use it almost in any conditions. Maybe some of you remember our last uh, webinar where we showed uh, different, uh, different receivers. And also you may, might see that we were using this equipment with, uh, during the rain and it worked fine. Okay, uh, so this is uh, almost everything I can tell about TPT522N. Just a little bit information for you later when we will be doing the practical part. And now we will move on to another set of equipment. Uh, it uh, doesn't have its name yet, but I hope soon we will be having this uh, product name. But for now, this one is, uh, is uh, Cable Locator CBI309G or AP19.3 receiver. That's kind of complicated. Just call it AP19.3. That's fine. Uh, and this one is the set, pipe transmitter set, MAG05. I would like to give you more information about the MAG because you are quite familiar with the receiver. And of course, I will tell you about it later. But first, we will start with this one. This one is the same thing as this transmitter. So basically... It's a transmitter. You put it into the pipe, which uh, is not conducting any electric current. And this thing creates this electric current and this electromagnetic signal from the inside of the pipe. And you locate it with the receiver. It's easy as that. But uh, this thing uh, emits the signal only on particular frequency. It is 512 hertz. And you have to push this uh, flexible rod into the pipe just to carry on the tracing of this pipe. But the most important thing about this uh, accessory is that this thing allows to measure the depth, the depth of the pipe. It's very important. And we will show you how to do that, of course. Also, a very important thing here is the IP19.3 receiver. This is a GPS-based receiver, which also has the zone delocation function. Uh, it can store uh, some data in its memory. It has mini USB port. It has uh, extension port for uh, accessories. And also it supports the storage of GPS coordinates. It means that if you're locating something, suppose a plastic pipe, you can store this data in the memory of the device. And by applying the certain points, GPS points on the provided software, you can see your pipe on the Google Maps. That's very handy. So these are two separate sets. They represent different ways of um, pipe location. We will show you both. We will not be taking all the accessories with us. We will take only what's necessary for plastic pipe location. So. If you need some time to uh, ask some questions, we will be happy to answer. And while we will be carrying the equipment, you can ask your questions and I will be replying to them while when we will be on the test field. It's already a question there. Okay. 
Okay. Nice to meet you. Hello to everybody. Yes. Hello to everybody. Um, okay. There are no questions. Wipe the lens. Video is not clear. Mm -hmm. Agree. How can we check for smaller diameter pipes? I will answer this question on our test field and you will be able to see everything with your own eyes. And uh, I will tell you. Just hold on a second. We will be carrying our equipment with us, and after that, we will be replying to all of your questions. Just give us some time to prepare the equipment. And we will take some accessories with us just to make everything protected. What? Any demo of what? Yeah, we will do that ju just in a minute. Let us bring the equipment to the spot and we will do the, the demo, of course. We can't... No, 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 we are not leaving you. We are moving to the test field. That's fine. I'm just preparing the equipment for transportation. Окей. Okay. Uh, рука свободна есть? Держи. Да потом начнем, да? Окей, okay. пойдем. Ты можешь поснимать наше здание, пока я расскажу, что мы... Снимай. So uh, on this uh, on this part of our uh, demo, uh, you see that you need two persons to do the job to carry everything with you. And uh, I would like to add the information that this is our building. This is the place where we produce and develop our equipment. So we are situated in uh, Russia, uh, Kalomna, Moscow region, and here we have our research and development, production and sales and marketing departments. And uh, this is basically the, the place where we create our equipment. Okay, let's move to the, to the test field. Okay. okay, Dina wants to join me on this way. So basically we're not only producing the equipment, we're also testing it here and we have a test field for water leakages, for cables and pipes, for power cables. We locate almost everything uh, that, that we produce the equipment for. And today we will be using the real uh, manhole with uh, an asbestos pipe. And we will show you two ways to locate this pipe. Both ways require an access to this pipe. And uh, we will show you how how different equipment works in uh, similar conditions. That, that should be interesting. We're already approaching our spot. It's not far. Uh, Dina asks me to find out if you can hear me or is there any problem with the signal? Just let me know if you don't hear me. That's sad, but I hope, I hope that you hear me well. Because I will be talking a lot. Okay, while we're preparing the equipment for the operation, I will ask our operator to check if he connected to my headphones. Uh, just hold on a second. Lenny, проверь, подключены наушники или нет. Подключено, да, все? Ну все, значит, должно работать. Okay, uh, if you can hear me well, please type plus in the chat and we will carry on if everything is fine. If no, we will try to do something else. Yes, yes, yes. That's very good. I love to hear you. Окей. Okay. А есть вопрос? Окей. Okay. 
Uh, while we're having some technical issues, I will be replying to your questions. Uh, how many type of the Zonda transmitter connected to FlexRod? For now, it's uh, the only type. Uh, the, this one is uh, 512 hertz. Uh, only this uh, Zonda can be connected to, to the flexible rod. What is the smallest smallest leak that can be detected? The smallest leak. Okay, we're stepping away from our main topic. Let me answer this question very, very shortly. Uh, every leak which, which is having pressure, minimal pressure, two bar, can be detected. Let's uh, put it like this for this particular event. If you like to know more about water leakage detection, we can have another event which will be completely dedicated to this uh, matter. And there you will be able to ask your questions or you can uh, drop an email to Dina and she will forward it to me and I will reply in detail. Yes, 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 here, clearly here. Okay, fine. Uh, on this particular moment, I would like to introduce my colleague he will be assisting me today. This is Anthony. Hello. Everyone. Yeah, this is my colleague. He will be assisting because most of the locations require two persons. He will be helping me a little bit. He will be doing most of the job and I will be explaining what is he doing. And uh, first, we will try to show you the acoustic uh, detection. So while Anthony will be connecting the uh, preparing the receiver for the location. I will be connecting the impact device to a pipe and uh, I will show you how to apply this device to the pipe. Okay, uh, this is our manhole. Покажи, пожалуйста. This is our manhole. And uh, as you can see, we have a part of asbestos pipe right here. And this is the pipe with, that we are going to locate today. Uh, so first, uh, we will try the, to install impact device on this pipe and see uh, if we can if we can detect some signal. So I will be jumping to the manhole just to be careful a little bit. Okay, like this. Yes. So I'm taking the impact device. I'm taking the chain. It has the chain. So there was a question there. If uh, what is the mi minimum diameter? Preset na korčki, paralsta. What is the minimum diameter uh, of the pipe that can be located? It can be uh, five centimeters, like this. It can be very small. You see, so it's the minimum diameter of the pipe which is supplied. Supported, sorry. So how do we connect the impact device to the pipe? Uh, so first, we take the end of the chain and put it here in this small hole. Put it through like this. Yeah, like this. And then we put the impact device itself with this part on the pipe. So this part should be applied to a pipe as good as possible. We're just putting it like this. I will hold it so you can see, like this. And then we take another end of the chain from the other side. Just give me a second. I will show you, like this. Yeah. And on the other side of the impact device, we're having a carabine, which we use to fix the whole, the whole thing on the pipe. We're mounting it. We just take one part of, of the chain and apply it. So now you can see that, that the whole construction is not that steady, it's falling. That's fine, we use this handle just to make it more, more steady. So now you can see I even can't move it with my hand. So it's very, very steady. I hope that's pretty clear. Another thing that we will be doing is connecting the impact device to a transmitter. 
the transmitter has some connection port here, and we just apply it. We just see the markings on the connector and do it like that. Yeah, that's it. So now we can see if, if the device is working. I will not be leaving this place. I like it. Uh, and uh, uh, here we will be put, putting, putting the, inputting the settings of the transmitter. So uh, despite this uh, device is in Russian, I will show you there are pictures for everybody. You see these two hammers. These two hammers, they switch the strength of the impact. So if we're selecting the smaller, the impact will be pretty weak. If we select bigger uh, hammer, the signal will be stronger and the impact will be more, more, more um, hearable, audible. If we put the press this button just for the middle position, nothing will happen. It will be just in standby mode. So let us start. Let us check if the impact device is working. We will put it to smaller impact. And then we will turn on the power supply of this device like this. Oh. We will wait while well, some indications. And now you can hear that impact device that impact device is literally striking the pipe you can see that dust is coming off the pipe yeah and also you have multiple settings i will turn it off just for a second and explain you something uh of course you can switch the frequency of this impact you have three settings slow medium and fast now we were using uh the slower one and i will show you the medium one let me put uh the switch here please uh, show our colleagues what, how it's done the the top left uh far left switch is switching the frequency of impacts we're putting it to middle frequency we're keeping it the same small impact and we turn on the transmitter and see what's happening You see that impacts are happening more often. I hope you can hear what's happening in the manhole. And also, yeah, it's indicated in, the, in this LED indicator. So each impact is indicated. And now we will be testing the highest possible frequency of impact. So we're switching the transmitter to the high frequency of impacts and we do the same job we just turn on the transmitter and wait for some time you can hear that impact device is smashing the pipe more rapidly okay i hope you can hear that we will turn it off and now I would like to show you the difference between impacts. Now you remember the weakest, the weak impact, and I will switch to maximum power of impact, and I will keep the low frequency of impact so you can feel the difference. Okay, let's test it. Literally, I'm feeling now that it's getting really, really stronger, and you can maybe you can feel that the signal got more more loud it's getting louder and the impact on the pipe is higher so for this particular application we will be using the higher impact and uh, the the lowest possible frequency here is a tip for plastic or asbestos pipe location uh, when you're locating the non-conducting pipe start from the lowest possible frequency of impacts because they are more distinctable as we are using the receiver with acoustic sensor all the surrounding noises are affecting our work and we have to make a distinctive sound of the impact device just to hear it and detect it and be able to tell if we're hearing the sound we need 
or if we're hearing something else. Okay, I will be uh, re extracting from the manhole and we will moving, we are moving to the receiver part of this whole procedure. So Anthony will be locating the pipe and uh, let me show you the settings of, of the equipment. If you uh, can't see the screen, just let us know. We will try to... Let's go in the shade. Let's go in the shade. It will help us a lot. Okay. Like this. So when you connect the sensor, the sensor to the receiver, the receiver automatically detects the sensor and automatically switches to one of two modes. Uh, this one is uh, plastic pipe location and also there is a water leak detection mode, but we will not be talking about it today. So we're switching back. We're switching back to, to plastic pipe location mode. So all we need to do now is to press play button here and switch the indication of the receiver by pressing this button here to the mode which uh, is used for plastic pipe locations. Now you can see that, that there is almost no signal. It's only my voice or maybe some surrounding noise. But you will hear how this situation will, uh, will change when I turn on the transmitter. Hold on a second. Yeah, uh, on equal distances, you can see the pulses on the device screen. It means that our device is working and it's, uh, it's already receiving the signal from the impact device. But now we're standing pretty much away from the place of the pipe position. And now we will have to move closer to the pipe. And see what we can do here. Okay, so how the procedure is done, basically. You place the sensor from left to right or from right to left, and you compare the signal, which is visible on the receiver screen. Your goal is to locate the maximum signal. So suppose you take three points, left point, middle point, and right point. On left point, you have signal equal to 20. In middle point, you're having signal 100. And in right point, you have a signal equal to 30. It means that the pipe itself is in the middle. And you have to keep the pipe in the middle also, always so you can, you can track it. So now, Anthony will be inputting some settings. He will be changing sensitivity settings because the input device is very close to, to the sensor. And now he will be changing the position of the sensor in order to locate the pipe. So now you, you can see that he's positioning the sensor and the impacts are equal to 21, 14, 17, 22. And see what happens when he will apply the sensor closer to the pipe position, a little bit left. Like this. See, moving it left for something like 50 centimeters. Receiver needs some time to adjust the signal. Just some time, a couple of seconds. And you see that he, he, the signal is, uh, is uh, decreasing. And you also need to reposition the sensor a little bit left just to hear the sound of the pipe. Again, you give some time to the device just to check. Now we're using zero dB amplification and uh, you can see that the signal is almost almost um, equal to the previous spot. Yeah, you have to move right. So the pipe goes right here. And now we're checking, changing the position of the sensor again. We're always moving to the position where the signal is the highest. That's, that's the way. Just to check and to pinpoint the pipe position, we're repositioning the sensor again. 
again, we give some time for the receiver to adjust uh, its electronics. When you are repositioning the sensor, it, uh, it receives 100 uh, signal because the microphone is open to all the noises and you have to apply it correctly. Uh, just uh, give, me, give me one second. I will show you how to apply the sensor. That's very important. So you see that acoustic sensor is having this sensitive head. This is basically a microphone and it has a protective skirt made of silicon. And what you can do, uh, what you have to do is to place the sensor so it a little bit, you know, stuck to the ground. So the whole thing, the whole microphone should be covered by this protective skirt. It will help you to cut off the noise and uh, it will help you to get better results. So this is a very important thing. Okay, you can carry on. So here repositioning the sensor again. 15, 17, okay. Let's reposition it again. 14, 15. Fourteen something, fifteen. I think you can you can add some gain just to make this uh, readings more distinguishable. Yeah, like this. And check the whole thing again. Okay. Uh, I will take the equipment just to show you how it's done. I mean, in in a technical way. So you're taking the receiver, you're taking the sensor and the headphones. Of course, in your headphones, you hear the sound of the input device. So you just apply. I will start from this side. You apply the sensor to the ground, wait for the device to gain some signal, and then you reposition the sensor, also compare the signal, and then you do it like this. Yeah, and you check the spots one by one, and then you go forward one meter or maybe 50 centimeters, and you Re repeat this situation like this like I'm having here a smaller signal I would say I would say let me check one thing like this yeah the pipe goes like this so I was having signal five here, seven here, and 12 here. It means that the pipe goes like this. So it's fine, we can, we can check it and see. Okay, so this is how it's done for, for um, acoustic uh, pipe location. Again, uh, there is one important question. What's the distance of such method? Generally, we say that the distance can be up to 150 meters because there are too many conditions involved. For example, the material of the pipe, uh, the surrounding uh, soil, maybe it can be sand or it can be uh, snow or it can be soil, it can be anything, it can be concrete. And the signal, acoustic signal emits through the pipe uh, for, for, through different pipes also differently. So, um, that is why we say that it is possible to locate the pipes up to uh, 150 meters, but that's not a guaranteed distance. It, it's, it's different each time, you see. So now we will be moving on to electromagnetic sensors, electromagnetic location, sorry. Yes, turn off the receiver. I will remove the, the impact device. Oh, sorry. 
Oh, from the from the pipe. I'm going back into the manhole. Before doing that, I will be also taking our MAG sensor just to have it with me here. Okay. I'm moving back like this. So, uh, as we, as you remember how we installed the, the impact device on the pipe, the whole procedure is done in the reverse. Подойди, пожалуйста, покажем, как снимать. First, you unleash this handle like this. You open it. And then you remove the chain from the carabine like this. And now your impact device is completely free. You can keep the chain like that for next application, or you can remove it. I like to remove it like this, just to keep everything clean. Okay, we're done with the acoustic location. And now we will be locating the same pipe uh, with this thing. This is the pipe zonde, you already know what's that. And to do that, we will be using an accumulator because this thing doesn't have any buttons. It <coughs> uses this small uh, accumulator, 18350. That's a small accumulator. And all you have to do is to remove the cap, put the accumulator inside the device, and through that device. Yeah, just make it tight. And now you will be able to hear the sound of uh, 512 hertz frequency. But I think that because of headphones, I can't see. That is why we will be checking it with the receiver. Is there any signal? Yes, okay. So for now, uh, this is uh, a two person job for sure. One person should be staying in the manhole and pushing the rod inside the pipe. Another person, that would will be Anthony with the receiver, he will be trying to locate this zonda from, from the inside of the pipe. So I'll be doing it like this. I will remove some, uh, some part of... I will be using some protection because, you know, the pipe is dirty, like this. Safety first. Okay. Okay. Now, I will do it myself. Okay. This thing is ready. And now we will be putting it inside the pipe. So basically, uh, we, we are putting this thing inside the pipe like this. And very slowly, I'm pushing the rod through the pipe so Anthony could detect it with the receiver. I'm pushing it. I'm taking this much. This is something like, I guess, 70 centimeters from the beginning of the device. And I'm holding this like this and pushing it inside the pipe. Yeah, let's uh, switch to receiver now. We're literally done for now with the, with the uh, transmitter. So the receiver has multiple modes for location. And there are, there are several modes. Uh, sets. One is extend and one is basic. You can switch them in the menu. And basic modes are used for cable and pipe location, for non-trade personnel or for low-trade personnel. And we use extend set of modes, uh, which is used for more uh, trained personnel and for more experienced people. You can see that in mode sc uh, screen is switching when you're changing the, the set of modes the basic and the extended. You see that there are two screens. It means you have enabled the mode for experienced users. Okay. 
Now we're going to modes. You see that there are multiple, multiple modes for precise cable and pipe location, which you may use in your operation. And now we're switching to Zonda mode. Uh, Zonda mode is used in the way that it um, represents the signal in a way that is uh, re represented as a graph. It's a real-time moving graph which indicates the signal and the higher is, is the indication, the closer you to, to the zonda. And when you're having the highest possible signal on the screen, you can press down button and measure the depth and the depth will be indicated here. It will be the zonda depth. And if your zonda is in the pipe, it will be afterwards the depth of the pipe itself. So uh, that's basically it. Also, you can change the uh, gain of the device by pressing left or right arrows. You see I'm decreasing the, the gain of the device now just because we're using it on a small depth and uh, <clears throat> not, not that uh, complicated situation. Okay, now I will ask Anthony to try detecting the, the Zonda. Uh, где -то 70 сантиметров. So now we're, we are coordinating what we have done. I'm telling Anthony that I pushed the rod something like 70 centimeters inside the pipe. And now he's trying to locate the signal from the underground. Okay, uh, seems like uh, the accumulator we were using for, for test before uh, this demo is uh, is dead, and we have to switch the accumulators. Just hold on a second, we will change that. Yeah, you can ask your questions. Uh, okay, I will be replying to your questions while Dina is looking for some uh, spare batteries. Белая картонная коробочка, да, там не пластиковая. Ага. Пусто. А, правильно, потому что она у меня. Все, сейчас. First, yeah. Okay, in toilets, we usually use pipe diameter 15 millimeters to 25 millimeters. How can we able to detect leakage source and the exact pipe location? So, uh, suppose it's a metal pipe and you can detect it electromagnetically. And if it's a plastic pipe, you can detect it only only by using the, the infrared camera or maybe some kind of, a, I don't know, uh, some scanning device because uh, the toilet piping usually comes inside walls and inside the, uh, inside the buildings and it's very small. Our sensor, our zonda is too big for that, for toilet piping, yeah. But uh, also you can you can purchase a smaller zonda of other other companies not produced by Techno EC and you can use them uh, with our equipment or with your own equipment. So there are smaller versions of the same zonda. In case we don't have the extended pipe piece in the manhole, how do we install? Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a disadvantage, minor disadvantage for this equipment. And uh, if, if uh, you, you don't have an access to a pipe, you have to create it. Suppose uh, you know where the pipe is coming out of the building and you just apply the impact device to it or you know where this pipe is coming inside the building and you have to... Uh, drill the hole in it and put the, the zonda there. Of course, you have to remove ev everything uh, what's inside the pipe somewhere. Yeah, that's a, that's a disadvantage, but there's just no other way. Frequency range. Uh, frequency range for what? For impact device. Impact device is creating one hertz frequency it's uh, one strike per second that's one hertz what's the maximum depth the maximum depth for um, acoustic location is three meters for electromagnetic location it's uh, six meters 
what is the maximum length of run for the Zonde? We supply uh, different uh, length uh, pushing rods. The maximum length we can supply is 100 meters with 10 meters extension. So it is uh, 110 meters in total. Can AP19.3 be used independently in the toilet to detect concealed copper piping? Uh, no, because copper piping should carry some signal from somewhere. It, sh it, should be, it should be electromagnetic signal or acoustic signal. So by itself, no. You can use the metal detector or, or the something, yeah, like portable metal detector. It can be handy here. What is the power of transmitter AG144.1? Battery powered or AC powered? If battery powered, how long can be used? That's a good question. Uh, I will reply in the following order. Uh, what is the power of AG144.1? The power is uh, 160 uh, watts. That's a pretty powerful thing. And... Uh, it is powered by two 12 volts accumulators, which are installed inside the device. And it can run up to seven hours, up to seven hours. Yeah, that's fine. How to go beyond, ah, sorry. Yeah, up to seven hours, uh, the lifetime of the transmitter. How to go beyond 110 meters. You can use the other side of the pipe. You can go both ways, first from one side, check 100 meters, then the other side, and then you eventually will find out the pipe. But you can also uh, dig the spots where you hear the signal when the signal is maximum. You just dig the spot, attach the impact device there on the pipe, and go forth. That's how it's done. So we have the choice to locate PVC pipe, acoustic using transmitter and electromagnetic using Zonda. We have to choose, sorry, I have to, yeah, you have to choose. You can switch between them and you have to choose, yeah. For Mac type, two choices, yes. But we, as Techno EC, were supplying only this Zonda with us, the, the MAG, the bigger one. Uh, that's that's the only zone that we're currently having now. That's a th sad thing to say, but yeah, that's all we have for now, and we're using it pretty commonly. Uh, so I think that we have checked if it if it works properly. No, что там, Дина? Нет. Okay, we're having some uh, minor technical issues. Uh, I think that uh, the batteries were not fully charged. Just give me, I will try to do it by myself. Maybe, maybe I can do it. You have to be sure if you, if you... Just hold on a second, I will try to hear the signal. Yeah, it's creating a signal, I can hear it. Now it's creating a signal. You should see it on the receiver screen. Yeah, it's there, it's there. Okay, now we will uh, wait for Anthony to return to us. Ah, you want to show, just put it on the ground. Okay. Кто? Ну конечно. А, штучка, да, бог с ним. Okay, maybe maybe there are any other Ah, yeah. We have pipes for 1 meter diameter running for a few kilometers. Do you have any solution? Mm. The solution here is uh the simple uh, some some companies which are working in telecom or in uh, in pipe pipe building, they have a bigger devices for that, and I think that we can we can try arranging such device, but it's better to arrange it on your side, because 
the delivery, the international delivery of such uh, pushing rod will be very expensive to your country. And I, 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 we can we can calculate that, no issue, but it will be more expensive than the device itself, the delivery. So uh, it's not that's not that uh, profitable for you in first place and for us in the second. Um, okay, we will replace the Zonde for now. Ah, the Toto still there. Yeah, just move on. Да, есть, есть. Давай, давай. Ходи, So again, we will be using the the protection for our zonda. Now we are sure that the signal is there. And we will be checking it with the receiver. Okay. Let's do it like this. Okay, I yeah, will be applying this thing back to the pushing rod, like this, just a couple of seconds more, oh, they're popping, okay, so we're doing the same thing, I'm taking something like 17 centimeters, and trying to put this thing inside the pipe without damaging the operator, okay. Okay, like this. And I'm pushing it inside, like this. Now, Anthony is trying to locate the signal from the Zonda. So the the procedure will be the same here. Moving, he's moving. He's moving the receiver from left to right, trying to locate the maximum signal. But the main difference here that the signal on the graph is having three maximums. So when you're approaching the zonda, you will be having the smaller uh, peak of the signal, then the bigger one, and then another smaller, small peak. And that will mean that the biggest peak will be indicating the zonda. And, but to be sure that you are locating your zonda, you have to see the two smaller peaks. So the one in the, in, in the first place, the bigger one in the middle, and the smaller one afterwards. It will indicate that you are locating the zonda and nothing else which can emit the same signal. Let's... Ну что, есть там сигнал, Антон? Пропал сигнал. Okay. The signal is missing again. Let's change the the sensor itself, some minor technical issues. This equipment was on the test field too often. It may have got tired, that's fine. We will be removing the protection. Yeah. So you can see that the Zonda is pretty removable from its install place and you can apply a new one just easy as that. Okay, and we will be doing the same job here. New accumulator. We will put it inside the MAG Zonda. Oh, very good sound. By the way, if you can hear the sound, just let me know because I can hear it well. Yeah, if you hear the beep, it means that this device is working very, very good. Where's the accessory? Okay. Let's try this for the third time. Third time is the luckiest. 
same procedure, 70 centimeters. Please, Anthony, check. So now we will be positioning the camera just so you can see the signal of, of uh, the transmitter. Yeah, the signal on the receiver screen. And now Anthony is pushing the button trying to measure the depth, I guess. And uh, you will be able to see that the upper left part of the screen will be indicating the depth while he will be pushing the down button. Yeah, uh, you've seen that how, how the signal is indicated and I will put, pull uh, the zonda a little bit more so you got the idea how the pipe is located. So I'm taking another 70 centimeters like this and I'm pushing it again till the end. And now we're back to Anthony. He's trying to locate the signal. I told you that this is a two-person job, so while one, the first one is working, the second one is having rest, but he should be carefully, he should be careful, yeah, just to, to be ready to help his uh, colleague in any moment. You see that Anthony is checking the signal, he's locating the maximum signal. Now he's trying to measure the depth of uh, the, the zonda. I think that he managed to do that. Please show the screen of the device so he could see, so you could see the, the the depth. Yeah, the sun is behaving badly today. Uh, Anton, покажи, пожалуйста, как, как ты ну сейчас глубину померишь, как перемещаешь um, приемник и сигнал уменьшается, чтобы они понимали, что сигнал меняется. So now uh, Anthony will show you that when you are moving the receiver away from the zonda, the signal on the graph is decreasing, it's getting smaller. So uh, you almost all the time may be sure that you are locating your zonda by increasing or decreasing signal. Yeah, so uh, this is pretty much it. When you're done your job, when you located the pipe, you can remove the MAG sensor from the pipe and make sure that you're doing it safely because this thing is very, very hard and it can damage you and your colleagues. Yeah. So now we will have an answer and question session. If you have some other questions, we can answer them. Just give me a couple of minutes to finish my job and the, the other people to type in the questions. And I will happily reply to them like this. Yeah, first I will jump away from the manhole spend too much time there. Okay, we have some time for your questions. Okay. We have uh, one meter diameter pipes for a few kilometers. Do you have any solution? The solution is the following. You locate a certain distance, then you dig out the pipe, you install the mounting device, the uh, impact device back there, and you continue to trace. If you're using a Zonda, you can use an extension uh, flexible rod of your local manufacturer because delivery of such rod from Russia to a country will be very expensive. 
uh, what is the smallest diameter uh, that the zonda and can pass through uh, the smaller the, the smallest the, the rule is uh, the following the diameter of the pipe should be 10 to 15 percent more than the diameter of the zonda so it can turn off uh, not turn off turn left or turn right inside the pipe so this particular device we're having uh, 50 millimeters diameter so it should be 60 and more uh, 50 60 and more yeah for successful location can't find small pipes with a special adapter no uh, smaller pipes can be located with the uh, impact device uh, and uh, you don't need uh, any special adapter to do that you just apply the the impact device to a pipe and you just locate it acoustically okay any chance of demonstrating a correlator uh, currently we're having only the russian version of the correlator it has russian software it has russian indication of the buttons and i hope we will have an english version soon but for now unfortunately we will not just be able to demonstrate it in the way that you can understand it because uh, Russian indications are too complicated for you. They may be too complicated for you. That is why we're, uh, we're not ready. But soon, I hope, I really hope that we will be able to do that soon. Uh, we make pre-insulated pipes. We want to know about water leak detection system. Uh, our first event, uh, which we had a couple of months ago, was dedicated to the water leakage uh, location. And I really think that we will be having time to repeat this event for you. And uh, I would recommend you to just uh, visit our Facebook page from time to time to subscribe to our email news teller. And you will get the notification first when we will be having the water leakage detection event. I think that we will have it pretty soon because uh, autumn is coming to Russia and we don't have much opportunity to demonstrate the leakages and we will be doing that very, very soon. Uh, how if there is an elbow, the zonda will stuck, I think, how to solve? No, if there is an elbow, this uh, pushing rod is flexible and the rod is having a round head, it will turn in the way where is the elbow, even if it's uh, 90 degrees, 90 degree elbow. Will the receiver detect depth if varying back field medium are involved? We mean acoustic waves. Uh, no, uh, the receiver used for acoustic location can't measure any depth. And if, even, even if you do uh, the varying back field medium, it will not help, sorry. Uh, this, this method excludes the depth measurement, unfortunately. Any equipment available to locate concealed copper pipe in the bathroom? Uh, for now, we just don't have uh, such equipment in our range, but you can use the metal detector, the portable metal detector or hidden wire detector. It will help you to locate the, the pipe inside the wall. Okay. Is there any sound from receiver ever detect a good signal from Zonda? Yeah, the receiver has uh, audio indication. We just turn it off for demonstration purposes. But yes, it has uh, the audio indication of the signal level. You will be able to hear the pitch of the sound will be changing if you're approaching the, the Zonda. Yes, of course. And if you're following it also. So I think that's, uh, that this is it for your questions. Uh, I, I would like to thank you. I would like to thank you for joining us today. That was a pretty important event for us. And I really hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did. That was very, very interesting. That's, that's also a new experience to us. 
that's also something new. I think that we will have something to improve on here. And I really thank you for joining us today again. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, please uh, stay tuned for our new events. We will be preparing something new. We will be imp improving everything we have. Uh, you know all the contact uh, details that uh, were provided by Dina. I will uh, uh, remind to you. Uh, it's info at technoac.com. And you can visit our website, technoac.com. Uh, thank you again. Uh, uh, Dina wants to say bye-bye to you also with me. So I'm telling you bye-bye. Thank you very much. Uh, Dina is also <laughs> saying goodbye to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining us. Thank you to our assistant today, Antonio, who helped us a lot. So, my wife, you can send us messages at info at technoic.co if you have any further questions. Yeah, so uh, you can use WhatsApp, email, or any other way of communication. We're all, always there for you. Thank you very much. Bye bye.